Hello and welcome to another Royal Reviewer video. In today's video, we are going to be doing a little bit of a, of a look back and review of the recent Royal Podcast. And I say Royal Podcast because there were uh, basically four Royal Family members on this rugby podcast. And of course, I'm talking about the good, the bad and the rugby, um, which includes Mike Tyndall. And it, let's just talk about, you know, how, how it is Royal. I'm sure many of you know and I don't need to tell you, but we had the Princess Royal, Princess Anne, we had the Prince and Princess of Wales, William and Catherine, and we had Mike Tyndall. Um, so those are the kind of royals. If you didn't know who Mike Tyndall is, he is married to Princess Anne's daughter, Zara. So there we go. Uh, now you're all in the picture. So first of all, I'm going to preface uh, this whole chat by saying I don't really know much about rugby. It's not really my game. Sport in general is not really my game. Uh, it's not really my thing, uh, which is which is what the whole topic of, of this podcast was about. It was about sport and the impact that sport has, and in particular, rugby. So I felt a little bit out of my depth watching this. There was a little bit of trepidation going into it. Will I understand what they're talking about? Will it be relevant to me? I watched it all through. It's about 50 minutes long, and it's actually a really good podcast. You didn't, I can tell you now, you do not need any prior knowledge of any sports or indeed rugby to be able to watch and enjoy this podcast. It was just a really good, informal, disc light hearted discussion with a few royal insights um, about sport and rugby in general. So this is a podcast that's been going on for a very long time. Mike and some of his rugby friends have been have been doing it. Um, the podcast was filmed at Windsor Castle. Um, in fact, a room that I'd walked through on my recent Windsor Castle um, tour. I had a little tour of it. So um, I recognised the room and I recognised those ornate green and gold sofas and the big pot plants. And when I was walking around there in person, I did actually think, were the pot plants there during Queen Elizabeth's reign? I know the pots would have been there, but did they actually have plants in them? Or is are the plants there because of Charles trying to make um, the palace, um, the castle feel more, um, more green, I suppose, to give it that more homely feel? The one thing I will say about Windsor Castle is it does have that homely feel, but let's get back to the podcast. So star of the show, I think, was Princess Anne. I could not stop watching the Princess Royal. Whenever she spoke, it was always engaging. It was always very well informed. She knows her stuff. She has been involved, obviously, with sports uh, in the United Kingdom and, and rugby you know, throughout her royal career. And of course, she was um, a competitive athlete in the Olympics herself, as, as was her daughter, Zara. So she has a legitimacy in being there. Um, and of course, the Prince and Princess of Wales as well, both very sporty, very competitive. And that's one thing that came out about uh, Prince William and Catherine was the competitiveness between them. Uh, they are a very competitive, sporty couple. The uh, Princess of Wales in particular is very, very sporty. She, she likes tennis cricket, all kinds of sports, including one revelation that came out, an unusual one, was of course that she likes cold water swimming and she will seek out, even in the rain, to go into these cold waters. And kind of fresh water swimming has had a bit of a resurgence here in the UK, this kind of cold water swimming, including in the sea. People go out, they get cold and they indulge and it's supposed to be really good for your body i mean i quite like cold i quite like cold water i quite like cold showers so i can relate but i have never done it in an open kind of public space like a, a lake or anywhere like, anywhere of that nature apart from the sea i have been in a cold sea before um some people even do it naked yes yes they do i'm, I'm not going to cast aspersions and say that catherine does it naked but she does see she does seek it out and I imagine that there will be lots of private places on, on the royal estates that she would be able to seek it out and do such things on. So good for her that she's found something that must be very invigorating uh, and quite bracing at times. I imagine quite cold. Careful, you'll have someone's eye out if you get in there too cold uh, with, with little clothing on. Anyway, anyway, I'm casting aspersions. I'm casting wild aspersions. So 
would I go, would I go into like a cold lake or something? I don't know. I'd have to give it a go. I'd have to give it some consideration. And by the way, just out of safety, do make sure if you are going cold water swimming um, that you, or any, any kind of water sports, that it is somewhere safe. Um, that is absolutely paramount. Don't just jump in any body of open water. So that was a little nice insight. Um, they spoke about sports day and as parents, how competitive they are, how they sort of like to be involved. I think Catherine did a race barefoot because they weren't prepared, uh, because they didn't know that there was going to be a parent race. So she was, you can just imagine her chucking off her heels, flinging them, and then sort of getting down to it. I think, um, <laughs> Prince William as well also was beat. I think he said by an Italian parent. Um, I, I don't know whose sports day it was. Was it uh, George, Charlotte or Louis? Who knows? They also spoke about um, female um, competitive sports as well. So, for example, uh, female rugby teams, female football teams, all these different teams um, are now becoming very, very popular and how much of an inspiration that is for young girls to be able to not just look up to individual sports personalities, of which there have been uh, women, but to actually be able to pick out women from team competitive sports has been really powerful. So they spoke about uh, that. There was also lots of lots of laughter and jokes and banter. And of course, this is where the Princess Royal comes into her own. She's very dry and she does give that kind of steely look that I think would bring terror into the minds of most people. Uh, but behind that steely glare is a little glint of humour. You can see the, the cogs turning. She's very quick. She's very sharp. She's very much like her father, the Duke of Edinburgh, the late Duke of Edinburgh, I should say, Prince Philip. Um, she, she, stress, she jokes about the fact that she is a pessimist. She, she's definitely not an... She says, optimism uh, is, is not my thing. Uh, and everyone kind of laughed. I think knowing that perhaps she she does look on the on the pessimistic side, and of course she related that to to horse riding and the fact that you know don't count your chickens basically until they've hatched. So she she has a bit of a um, a pessimistic outlook on life, which I find quite humorous. Uh, you can kind of imagine it, can't you, behind the scenes? And of course she spoke um, about her daughter Zara, and Mike spoke about uh, his wife Zara. Um, and William spoke about the pride he felt when uh, he saw her competing and winning at such a level. Uh, and in fact, it even brought a tear to his eye. So there was some good, meaningful conversation going on, even things that I probably forgot to mention. Um, I think the setting was really good. You could hear the aeroplanes going over as well. Of course, I've been there. So you know, even in a, in, in a really thick walled castle, you can still hear the aeroplanes going over to, to Heathrow. I imagine they get used to it. I really do. Anyway, it was a really good podcast. Now, some people, some cynical people out there will be saying, well, you know, isn't Mike Tyndall, you know, using the, his royal connections to make money? Um, and it's certain fact that that podcast will be making money. I don't know at this point whether or not any donations have been made um, reg regarding any profits on it. I'll keep my eye out. And of course, if anyone hears anything, do let me know. Um, but the one thing that is certain about this is that all the people involved legitimately are there for a reason. Of course, William and Catherine um, have all of their sporting patronages. And of course, as does Princess Anne, the Princess Royal. So legitimately, they have a right to be there. They have a right to be talking on a sporting podcast. And it was very insightful and i think it kind of showed the kind of almost future direction of of where they're going to be as a royal family in sport in other words they are going to continue having a presence in um british sports um not just british sports around the world as well and in particular i think there will be an emphasis on female sports but in particular female team sports. I think that's something that will be coming up, perhaps even hinting at future um, royal patronages for the Wales children. I mean, in particular, Princess Charlotte, who is um, who was mentioned in the podcast as being very keen at some of these team sports. Um, 
one thing bef before I go that came across was the fact that um, people should try lots of different things and try lots of different sports. And I know some people are going to be saying, well, that's really easy if you're a royal family member and you've got access to ponies and horses and swimming pools and all the rest of it. It's not that easy for regular people to have access and try lots of different things. But, you know, I know from growing up in the United Kingdom that our schools are very, very good at offering many, many opportunities to try these different sports and team games. So as long as, you know, you have the character to be able to try these things, there will be probably probably something that you that you try, that you like, um, that you may be able to take further, even outside of school, out, outdoors clubs, that kind of thing, um, holiday camps, all the rest of it. So I think it was a good podcast. I enjoyed watching it. Um, will I be going back to watching it when the Royals aren't, aren't in it, when it's just about rugby? Probably not. Probably not. Uh, but I did enjoy the Royals during this podcast. One thing, oh, before I go as well, I will say Catherine's forehead is looking very, very smooth. Uh, definitely the, the um, telltale signs, I think, of Botox. Again, I'm not going to cast aspersions, but I recognise the fact that I think she's had some Botox. I don't think she's had anything else done. Uh, particularly, but she is looking rather good, I have to say. Her hair is looking long and flowing and lovely. William's looking good. As I've said before in previous videos, I think he's looking, he's coming into his age. I think he's aging well, like a fine wine. Um, and yeah, I just, I probably won't be watching any, <laughs> other, other than, I suppose I can get the joy in the in the rugby bodies. I think the rugby bodies are quite nice. But other than that, I don't think I shall be partaking. But I would watch Princess Anne in anything. She's a natural podcaster. Um, I think you could put her in front of a microphone. She's very well informed on so many different topics. I could watch Princess Anne all day. Anyway, thank you for watching this video. If you have enjoyed it, please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media. And of course, do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me to you all and goodbye.